Hello everyone and welcome to the Russian Dota 2 League Loser Bracket Finals Best of 3 match between Vertz Pro and no Tide Hunter Gonna unfortunately miss most of this draft As I was asleep, it got pushed forward an hour Overnight, of course in Europe, that's in the morning, but Here in America, that means it got pushed from 9am to 8am And I of course was trying to sleep as much as possible, but we're in it now. Didn't miss any of the game. I am here. Before the game gets started, we can go over the players and the heroes very quickly. We got Virtus Pro on the dire side of this game. He's gonna have NS. Thirty seconds to battle. Playing the Rubik Smile. Gonna be on the Lion. Illidan on the Spectre. KSI taking up the darks here, and finally, 55, I don't know if it's a stand-in, taking up the Nyx Assassin. Could be a fake the battle begins. for crazy, or it could just be a stand-in, not sure. <laughs> Meantime, no Tidehunter, they got Loda taking up the Phantom Lancer, Aki on the Keeper of the Light, AGM on the Windrunner, S4. Playing the Night Stalker and finally Admiral Bulldog going to be on that Nature's Prophet. So looks like we are going to have the single lane versus single lane bottom, single lane versus single lane mid, and then finally tri lane versus tri lane up in this top lane, featuring the Phantom Lancer actually in an aggressive tri lane coming out from No Tide Hunter. Phantom Lancer definitely a hero that we typically can think of as being run as a safe lane farmer almost all the time, not usually seeing him head to a tri lane or an oh. aggressive tri lane rather. <laughs> See how he ends up being able to farm, he's doing pretty okay at the moment. It's gonna be up against Illidan. On that Spectre. That is not yours. Another hero that we don't see in Tri-Lanes too often, that's mostly because we don't ever see Spectre played. When <laughs> we do see Spectre, you expect to see her firing in that Tri-Lane. Just as she is now. And we'll see how this ends up working. Not sure what led to the draft. I believe Spectre was the last pick. From Virtus Pro, no reason to pick a hero like Spectre you early. Light. We will protect it. As it's rather unlikely. Anyone would uh, ever really contest that. No Titaner actually being one of the few teams that I've seen pick up that Spectre. Illidan trying to go and contest Show me this demon witch sorcery. the pull here coming out from No Titan or EGM trying to run away with Windrun. And gonna be successful for a moment and Smile looking like he's the one that's gonna be in trouble. Can load again range for a nice auto attack from Aki gets the first blood. Go in the way of No Titan up Before in this top lane. Probably the TV's caster got the prize for witnessing first blood. Sweet. Sweet. Meantime, KSI continuing to creep skip in this bottom lane, putting some pressure on Emerald Bulldog, but nothing's hit the tower yet. Emerald Bulldog just gonna port back using teleport. Bottom tower kind of amusing. Mid lane? That's gonna be Night Stalker running up against the next assassin. Not only we see a ton of, and uh, probably some reasons for that. Like Night Stalker not being picked up by too many teams anymore. As well as Nyx Assassin, kind of uh, not a hero we see in mid maybe as much as we used to, as he's kind of almost always run as a support. Many teams do favor him that way. But versus Pro, often running him in that mid lane. And of course, no time to do like to run that Night Stalker in the hands of S4, taking him mid. For the moment, looks like Spectre is getting the best of the farm up in this tri-lane. Not particularly surprising. Ah, they are taking a lot of harass there. But has that point in dispersion. Actually, he's going for a one in each skill thus far, hitting level three. And dispersion, pretty good ability to have. At least one pointed. Gives a 10% damage reduction. It's all reflected. Or disrupt dispersion? Did I see disrupt? But dispersion, pretty good spell, turns out. Pretty good spell. Passive, even. S4, not really getting the best of farming them in lane. 
55, or perhaps crazy, not sure if that's who this actually is. It's doing pretty well, there's a dive guard at the top. With Admiral Bullock like, helping Windrunner get to kill and Rubik and now Nix Prophet helping kill off Lion. Illidan trying to run wherever he can, and no Titan to try to get position, position to keep chasing after him. He's stuck here. Till that dagger is off cooldown. He's just gonna throw it back. Actually getting a last hit with it. That's two more kills going the way and no tight under up in that trial lane. That's the kind of thing that they really need to get done here. Fan limits are not gonna get as much farm as Spectre if they're not really getting kills. Keeping these supports out of the lane. And if they kill off the supports, their supports are getting levels. And you see Cooper Lot already up to level three. While uh Rubik's still at level two. I guess Lion's at level 3 as well. They do have the opportunity to get a couple pulls off. As the counter wards have been countered now, blocking any sort of pulling. And everyone continuing to just sit and farm up in this top lane, trying to get anything they can done here. For Loda, he needs to try and contest farm. He's actually passed. Spectre in terms of farm for the moment. Keeper like gonna throw and illuminate through. Not gonna be a time to really contest anything there. And it's a fan of lances from Loda to try and last it. Power shot as well as illuminate. Abilities that can hit at a pretty long range. And with this chakra magic, they're gonna have access to that to be spamming those abilities for quite some time. Lucky with the second point in it now. And Phantom Lance even having, or Spirit Lance, having a pretty decent range. Not quite as good as Illuminate or Power Shot, but still decent, and Loda typically going to be closer to the enemy creep wave, anyways. Okay, so I could, however, continue to get the best of the farm on the map. Simply by virtue of always killing the enemy creep wave behind its tower. So there's never really any chance of anything else getting those last hits. He's just going all out on it. Popping that Nietzsche's Prophet ult now. It's going to fly through him. Doesn't look like it's hitting on much of anything. Oh, they're going on him. That's where S4 was. It's like, where did S4 go? But that leaves 55 in this Nyx Assassin, Assassin's B and Vendetta. And Rubik gets the lift on the winner. And it leads to her death. S4 now up in the top lane. Gonna go on Illidan, the Illuminate gonna miss, but Loda in range, and that's gonna be his death, it looks like. Unless Loda decides to miss an attack, Emma Bulldog 44 able to get the kill. Now 55 in some trouble. Double kill now for Admiral Bulldog. And then Nature's Prophet. It's a good rotation coming out from him. Able to get some work done up in this top lane. And it's now 5 to 1. Kill score in favor of No Tide Hunter. And they just keep taking all these kills up in the top lane. Actually, the solo mid. From Virtus Pro dying up there as well now. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Elden makes his way fortified. into the mid lane on that Spectre, trying to get farm wherever he can. He hasn't been having a great time topping quite a while. Fanwitzer is starting to surpass him. Nick's not pointing back in the top Dyer's lane. He's probably getting the last hit in the tier one tower. Gonna get Radiant's caught in trees. A shackle shot landing. Kind of a big deal. He's gonna get the power. Uh, Spike Carapace off, but it's not going to do a ton. EGM trying to zone him back with the power shot, but he gets stunned up, forcing it to go early, and Emerald Bulldog gonna lose his life. Getting hexed up and stunned, keeping him there just long enough to take that damage. KSI up here as well, trying to fight anyone out he can, but everyone's already gone. So, kind of a big rotation for No Tide Hunter. Uh, or, uh, Virtus Pro there. Just as big as No Tide Hunters previously, but they only get one kill out of it. However, it is on the Nature's Prophet, who's a pretty decent target. He was sitting at 3 0 before that game. And it looks like he's just going to head to the jungle now. Try to get some farm that way. Wood. 55 back in his mid lane now. I'm the next assassin. Do we have a second? I'm just going to try and check if this is crazy. I'll let it load. While we watch whatever's going on elsewhere. Looks like Loda's made his way to the bottom lane. Also tried to abandon that trialing versus trialing to get some more farm. He is ahead of Illidan, but not by too much. 
course, he's been involved in a lot of kills and has not died. Seeing at zero, zero, and five, which has been involved in all the kills, which gives him a lot of assist gold. And now he's porting back up to the top lane. He's just trying to get dodge the gank here from the Nyx assassin. Got to be successful in doing so. That vendetta not gonna last anyone near long enough. Aki though might be in some trouble. If he goes too far back, and now he actually is going to see it. But that's going to be his death. Even the wall being dropped there. Kind of surprising. In the meantime, Lion does go down the mid lane. It looks like Rubik going to fall as well. Nature's Prophet coming in for one last little bop on the head with his little curled root staff. So it's going to end up being a two for one trade on other sides of the map. Supports for support. And no tight under. Once again, coming out ahead. Vendetta gonna be popped. By 55 once again. Trying to find Nietzsche's profit on it would appear. And now heading back towards the bottom lane to get Aki once again. Poor Aki. Vendetta gonna end. Alright. Yeah, this is crazy. He's just under 55. Oh. Now we know. Now we all know. He is fake making this game. Spectre making his way down, gonna miss the deck. Might have landed. Aki trying his best to uh, stay away for as long as possible, now just gonna give his life up. Uh, the uh, dispersion actually killing him there. Now Illidan hiding in the jungle, everyone gonna be able to port out. So they get another free kill on Aki, on this Keeper Light in the bottom lane. But, those aren't really the kills they want to be finding. Lion gets EGM in the bot lower river. Kind of a much bigger deal. We didn't really find that regen room, but wasn't able to get it off in time, it looks like. Or, uh, leave it lo going just long enough to get some mana and health back. Ends up losing their life to this lion. Looks like Loda does have drums picked up now. On the fan lancer, he does like to run this fan lancer in a rather aggressive build. Which can be useful from time to time. Lion getting a kill on Night Stalker mid. Should I just be watching Smile? He's getting kills on shit. Basically shouldn't be getting. Didn't even have the figure of death for that one. Just a double stun, I guess. Well, no Tide Hunter farming in the jungle with their supports for the time being, it looks like. As well as the Nature's Prophet. He does have his Midas up. So we're going to have access to that to continue trying to build up farm. As we head into the mid game, he's currently sitting at the top of the last hit board as well. Of course, a lot of that probably from the jungle. He has been there for some time now. But he's also been involved elsewhere on the map. Has a treance as well. Has a teleportation maxed out now. Pull roots and run! Loader on the other hand, still pretty far ahead of the Spectre in terms of last. It's between gold per minute as well. Or uh, net worth. And see that he's sitting at about 1500 gold ahead, which is kind of a big deal. 12 minutes into the game, that's quite a bit of gold. Gold per minute, even putting him um, over 100 gold per minute. Lotus saying it's second. One Leech Prophet does sit on that top spot. Midas. Helping him secure that. It allows his nature, or, uh, Phantom Lancer to be a little more aggressive with his build. He does have another farmer on his team, one who's currently even doing the best. They can kind of rely on to be involved in these fights, be able to bring some big items, as well as a high level to the fights. Of course, Nature's Prophet, pretty good one at bringing stuff to fights, as can always be in a fight wherever it takes place with that teleport ability. The uh, Vendetta is up from crazy once again, and this time he's going to find out Admiral Bulldog. So level 8. Uh, oh, with Spectre being involved, that will definitely be the kill, oh, and Spectre gets the last hit. Using that haunt, nobody around really in a position. From no time to be able to contest that in any way. So Admiral Bulldog gets picked off in the midst of his jungle. And now Spectre rotating towards the mid lane with Nyx Assassin. EGM gonna get hit by a dagger. As well as an impale and then one last hit from Illidan. Gonna be death with that Deathlight smile. Taking some harass here. Looks like he's gonna be able to just get away as S4 kinda looped around in his chase. One void would have been enough. Finish him off, but with Nature's Prophet ult, putting him down to about 10 HP, he's just gonna pour it out now. No more follow-up available. 
You just probably need to bounce to one other thing before it hit him there. But didn't have the sight for very much longer, so he went for what he could get. Just missed it. Top tower taking a little bit of pressure on the no tide under the side. Just for mostly a creep waves. Illidan was up here farming a little bit, providing some pressure. He's got phase boots picked up as well as a bracer. So it looks like we're seeing him go for a drum as well. Getting those kills, pretty useful for him. Helps him get a little Double bit more farm to pick into the game. As he didn't have the easiest lane early on, his trialing felt like he kind of got outclassed a little bit. By trialing coming out from no tie under, just they were able to do so much damage with that Keeper Light and the Windrunner. And of course, Phantom Lancer. Even though people hate the scene when the teams pick up the Keeper Light and the Phantom Lancer, it looks like Gink coming into this jungle once again from Crazy. He's got that Vendetta up. Smile tried to go for the Earth Spike. Not going to quite be able to get it. Drops the sentry. Expecting there to be a ward there. In fact, there was not. Recall coming on loader. Now going to bring him to the mid lane. Keep him safe from all of these heroes that are currently bottom. As well as a lot of you, uh kind of transition into pushing this mid lane with the rest of his team. He is trying to be aggressive, Radiant's so this is the kind of place he wants to be. Attack. The thousand gold has triple boots rain. And finally jumps. We'll see if he uh, finishes this ring into a ring of Aquila instead of just Basilius. Or not. And it looks like the push could be stalled up by some Fade Bolt as well as Iron Shell action coming out from the Verse Pro lineup. Keeping it back for now. Nyx has made his way back to this mid lane as well up to 1700 gold. Looking like he might be just saving for Blink Dagger. Mech is picked up on the Dark Seer. Nothing. Arcane boots up on Rubik now. He's doing better than the Lion, who's just sitting on a bracer. Actually, going probably about even in terms of gold Lion, but Lion grabbed the bracer first. Lorna making his way to the top lane now to try and put some split pushing pressure on the Verse Pro lineup. Let's see what Illidan's got. He's got his drums picked up as well now. As well as having those phase boots. So do pretty okay for himself. Really back in this game in terms of farm. By comparison to what, where he was before, still sitting almost 100 gold per minute behind. Which is kind of surprising. But is what it is. And now everyone just sitting around in this mid lane trying to get whatever work he can get done. His S4, he's almost got an armlet picked up. Only about three, 200 gold away. At least the rest be 700. Should have that very shortly. It's going to make him a, quite a bit tankier and more threatening. For the second night time, it felt like he didn't really get too much done. No Tidehunter kind of just <laughs> let a kill lead slip away during that first night, actually. 7 to 8, and now the kill score in favor of Virtus Pro with that 8. Both teams trying to make the best of farming that they can. Gem picked up by Lion. Kind of surprising pick up the C. There's that shadow blade that's going to be coming out from Nature's Prophet as well as Spawn maybe just being concerned about warding or maybe trying to set up ganks on Phantom Lancer. It is certainly a good item. It does slow him down, especially if he dies in the near future. Which is exactly the kind of thing you don't want to see is you pick up this gem on a supporting arm that's not doing particularly well anyways and then you die in the first engagement you see with it. That's just as basically feeding 700 gold to the enemy team is... Most professional teams don't just immediately kill the gym. I'll pick it up with one of their supports or maybe on S4 as he's pretty tanky. And the gem, a pretty good item on him. And that'll allow them to feel a little safer, particularly against this. Next test of being played by Crazy Loda. In the bottom lane needs to be careful. Smoke is up. And they have a gem. Loda need to be basically already gone. Vendetta coming out. And they spot him. And Loda, gonna get fingered, smile, giving that to him, and he goes down very quickly. And that's a gem already working wonders for them. 
able to set up that kill. Could have taken quite a bit. Otherwise, might have popped the dust out of range. Might have been able to get away. Top tower is under attack. And Blink Dagger is going to be the pickup. Coming for crazy on this Nyx Assassin. It's going to allow him to be even more aggressive. And he's been kind of setting up all their kills. What's he doing? 3, 1, and 4. So he's only been involved, not involved in two of them. It's kind of a big deal early on. He's been able to uh, pull this game a little bit closer into reach for his promo. It was feeling like they were getting out farmed everywhere. That's the kind of power a hero like Nyx Assassin that's just naturally a very strong ganker. Has a lot of burst damage, ability to roam around that map with Vendetta, of course, in the stealth. Dodging most wards. They're essentially usually paired with a regular observer. And let's take a look at Golden Experience while it looks like No Tiger are kind of group farming. In the mid lane, we see Experience is favoring No Tiger still by a little bit. Just under 2k gold. Sing above 3k still in their favor. But you can look at sort of the trend, and Experience is all over the place with these kills. No Tiger definitely out farming versus Pro, but every time they get these kills, they're pulling it back just a little bit, keeping it in range. And of course, gold looking about the same. Definitely not been really an increase. There's almost a 4k gold advantage at one point. Now it's just sitting about 3,300. So just trading a little bit. They're losing heroes from time to time, but they're continuing to outfarm this Virtus Pro lineup. That's the kind of thing you got to be concerned about. It looks like S4 as well as EGM going to be smoked up in the dire woods. And Aki smoked up as well, but very far away still. And looks like there's nowhere good for them to go. As there's a smoking coming out from Virtus Pro as well, trying to do a wrap around. Maybe going on load up at this top lane. We might have a four and four engagement. But of course, that'll become a five v five very quickly as both heroes who aren't there are the ones with global teleports. Spectre gonna make a way in immediately. Nature's Prophet trying to get it as well. EGM and S4 getting caught by the line stuff. The vacuum gonna lead to a double kill for KSI. And that's getting caught up by Emerald Bulldog. But keep her light in the meantime. Gets killed off by Nyx Assassin up in the top of the fight. Loda able to escape, but that goes a 3 for 1 trade in favor of Virtus Pro. Losing their solo bit as well as two supports in exchange for only one of their supports. And they, the Tiger not even getting a very high value target. It was just Nature's Prophet and Emerald Bulldog catching out the Rubik in the back of the fight. And able to do just enough right click damage as well as his ult bouncing through to finish him off. Of the wood. And now immediately going to port bottom lane and try and get some push going on here. And those can't do anything top, especially with most of his Radiant's team dead. Top tower is under attack. And even if he ends up that he can start doing something up there, he'll be able to make his way back. Illidan, they're going to go for the Shackle Shot. I'm not going to make it. Mech is picked up on Emerald Bulldog now. S4 going on crazy. Looks like he's not going to be able to really do it. Spike Carvis is going to be popped. S4 taking a lot of damage. Trying to arm the tackle as best he can, and able to survive for more. Shackle shot gonna land out too. As well as the power shot, Illidan getting slowed up now, but there is the surge coming out from KSI, gonna keep him safe. Crazy now in that vendetta has the iron shell as well, and that's gonna be the death of EGM. It looks like all they needed was one last one with the vacuum actually for KSI. Gonna pick it off. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So EGM gonna lose his life trying to defend that tower. It is safe for the moment. Not really what they need it to be. Looks like Nature's Prophet popped his ultimate. Not gonna be able to land it on NS, and he should know Dyer's he's here now. Tower is under the attack. last couple of hits of that ultimate did hit. Now the creep wave, and that's probably in a lot of trouble. This is the wrath of nature gets it off. No. She's gonna give him quite a bit of farm as well to put some pressure in the way of no tide hunters' lanes. Probably would have liked to have kept that. It's a pretty attack. decent spell to have. Give him their use out of it before he steals something else. Pretty good, but. Alas, not gonna have any such luck. Oh. Lunate getting a couple kills in this mid lane for Aki. Lodo has picked up his Diffusal Blade, so it's gonna allow them to continue trying to put some pressure on with him. He's currently second in terms of last hits, just behind Nature's Prophets. So I'm doing pretty well for himself. Definitely out farming Illidan. On that Spectre, that's the kind of stuff you need. Spectre, kind of a tough hero to fight with that dispersion. Uses the ultimate, and it looks like Aki gonna go down the mid lane. Hilda getting the last hit, S4 trying to get in. And the Blink Dagger coming out from Crazy, going to deal some damage to EGM as well as the Finger of Death, but now 
Crazy, in some trouble. Gonna get the Vendetta off. It looks like he's getting away. Illidan trapped in trees with Admiral Bulldog. He's trying to get away as fast as he can. And it looks like everyone Radiant's getting out alive after that attack. initial kill of Naki. He's just kind of getting wrecked this game. Radiant's now he's sitting at 1 and 4 because EGM is 1 and 5 as well. Admiral Bulldog gonna get picked off in the back of the fight by Crazy. Meantime, Nukes continue to fly through from No Tide Hunter. <laughs> Not sure why he used Void of this Nature's Prophet Illusion and suicided. Radiant's but he did do that. And now Virtus Pro. Get another kill, and that time it's not a much more important hero in the form of that Night Stalker. Which allows them to really push in this tier 1 the tower without me having really any fear at all. Should be able to just get it done very quickly. We'll see who gets the last hit. Kneeling it. And Emerald Bulldog picks up a belt of strength. Are we going to see Necro Book come out from him? Not a hero, or an item we see a ton of anymore. Of course, it's pretty good on Nature's Prophet. Anything that allows you to push more quickly can be rather useful. And of course, the uh, level 3 Necro Book with the True Sight on the ranged one is pretty good for having out just in case you got this jerk Nyx Assassin trying to sneak into your team. Anything that gives a vision. If you spot him out, pretty useful. Just gonna go back to farming the jungle for a time being, it looks like, however. 100 gold up now on the Spectre. Look what he's going for. Has a Vanguard up, which helps get tanky. Vanguard not an item we see a ton of. But, uh, was kind of pretty standard on Spectre quite some time ago when Spectre was common. Spectre pointing out of the jungle. They're gonna get the Shackle shot on Crazy here. The Illuminate Gun Lance as well as the Spirit Lancer. It will do quite a bit of damage to Aki, and it looks like it's going to port in. Crazy going to go down when we were getting the last hit, but Aki in some trouble. Silence comes up on Illidan, slowing, or giving him that missed chance in his shackle shot. That's his death. Fan Lancer getting that last hit. So Illidan trying to get in there and sure that kill on Aki. Ends up losing his own life, and that's feeding two kills straight to no time in his lineup. One of them on their carry. Not what you want to be doing when you kind of have a pretty good kill lead, but that's what they're not really leading in terms of farm. These kills are what they need to keep in the game while they're buying more and more time for Spectre. It's kind of probably going for a little bit more of a late game build, not going for drums and to defusal. But I guess Vanguard, not that late game of an item either. Might have kind of felt forced into getting something that tanks her up a little bit. And of course, being tanky on Spectre, pretty good with Dispersion. As the more health you have, the more damage you do in the midst of a fight. Since everyone that hits you is just going to be dealing some of that damage back to themselves. Three heroes now from the lineup of VP. Hanging out in the bottom lane. Two supports as well as the carry. Try lane reassemble. Necro book one. Gonna be done for Nature's Prophet. So he's going that route. Maybe think of that split pushing is what he's eventually gonna need to do. Gonna have to be somewhat careful that he isn't just end up getting in fights with Spectre. And here comes a Roche attempt from them. I mean, Perks Pro. And it looks like no Tide Hunter are completely unaware at the moment. So should be able to just get this Roche kill clean and easy. And of course probably will be. And no Tide Hunter look like they are completely unaware. Fairlands are doing what he can to farm in the jungle. Mostly the Dire Jungle as well as the Agents with his illusions. Looks like No Tiner are kind of expecting a smoke ink or something. They're staying very close to each other. Roshan apparently not even on their mind, but that is going to be a free Roshan for them, Illidan with that Aegis. Going to be available to be just pretty aggressive, throwing a... Oh, Spectral Dagger over the river just to kill off some wards in that mid lane. That gem has really been a great pickup for Smile as he hasn't died and actually went for Boots of Travel as Lion. So luxurious. So luxurious.
Everyone from No Time Hunter hanging out in the mid lane, except for Loda, who's continuing to farm the jungle, and he's having a pretty good time of it with these illusions, just getting more and more farm than the Spectre, up to 2.5k lead there. Spectre trying to do what he can, but just not really as good as farming as a fan lancer can be with all these illusions. See what he wants to go for on Spectre next, up to 2700 gold. Might be picking up a heart of his own, doesn't do that much damage. That might be a concerning factor heading later in the game. But I kind of expect to see Loda go for a heart as well, up to 3700 gold. This possibly just picks up that Manta. To, of course, uh, doesn't have that up yet, which is a pretty powerful item to have on Loda on this Family Lancer. Gives you those more illusions as well as the base damage from giving quite a bit of agility. Still nothing really big picked up on Radiant anyone else. Just some wards on the two supports, which are mostly getting thrown away. At least if they spot out one hero before they die, they serve some purpose, save someone from a gank, but with this lion that continues to have a gem in his inventory just wandering around. The ward's not long for this world, and he's going to find out these wards in the middle of the Radiant Forest now. Farming going on. Looks like something was picked up by Crazy here. It's going to be an Ultra Norb, so it looks like we're going to be seeing a Scythe of Eyes. Coming out from him on the Nyx Assassin. Dark's here with a four staff now, as well as 2100 gold. So also seems quite farmed. And it looks like an engagement might be happening on this bottom tier 2 tower. The Recall going to come out from Keeper Light. Already popping the ultimate. Looks like just a channel illuminates through at the moment. He's still only level 8. 30 minutes in, so doesn't even have that max to illuminate. Pretty rough game for him, like I was saying before. He's died quite a few times, but at least he can channel the level 3 illuminate through. It still does damage to the creep wave. Actually misses that spiked carapace, which is also fortunate for Haki. top tower is under attack. And in the meantime, split pushing coming out from Nature's or uh, Phantom Lancer hitting that tier 2 tower. Kind of surprised if they're going to consider going for such a split push that Nature's Prophet hasn't made his way up there just to summon some treants. But Spectre, of course, up here as well now. Trying to defend. Another horde of illusions coming through. And you always got to be worried about your tower with these illusions. Illidan also has to be worried about his mana pool. Radiance bottom tower is under. You have a dive going beyond the tower. Aki taking some damage. We hit by vacuum. Finger of death coming out for Spawn. Might have been a little overkill there. But does get the kill. Radiance bottom tower. Does get that kill. He assures it. And now won't have that again for 100 seconds. 85 by the time I'm actually talking about it. Necro units running out trying to be a nuisance. Radiance bottom tower is and it looks attack. like they're gonna stall up this push for just long enough. Virtus Pro deciding to back off. Losing too much health on their top tower and not really making a ton of progress. They just pick off the Keeper Light. It feels like the only hero they've really been able to pick off for most of the game. I guess from time to time also EGM. On this Windrunner. And Sentry Ward's kind of their thing now. Doing their best to counter ward it while they can, but the gem up on the lion. Keeping their sight minimal. And we got a second. Let's take another look at gold and experience. See how that's updated a little bit. XP has popped over to the Verge Pro lineup now. So you can pop 3k, just a little bit over, trending above it as well. But a very jagged <laughs> graph. Been going back and forth with kills, with farm. Gold still sitting on the side of no Tide Hunter. Only ever pass passing zero when they got all four of those kills. Which was a pretty big fight to get. Loda hasn't decided to pick something up yet. Goes for the Reaver, so it looks like he is just going to be picking up that heart. And maybe even just trying to save for buyback. Make sure he has that just in case he gets picked off. United. Illusion of Nyx Assassin going to be in the Radiant Jungle. Not going to really accomplish anything. Just out there to bait some spells. That's for using some mana to void him up as well as silence him. And supports comes to this top lane. Loda gonna get his mana back from Chakra Magic. Now looks to be heading, pushing back up this top lane with his split push and power. And once he gets this heart up, these illusions gonna be even more annoying to deal with for the lineup. 
And there's an engagement coming out by the Radiant Ancients. That's four trying to do a damage he can. Has that BKB up, and it looks like he's just going to be able to port out. The vacuum not really catching on anybody but the Necro units, which are getting in a fight with Illidan. He's completely out of mana at this point. And here comes the re-engage, it looks like. Loda here now. Try to get Rage to throw a Spirit Lance, but there's a Surge on Illidan. Keep him alive for a moment. The Impale comes from Nyx. Not going to accomplish much of anything. There's the Spirit Lance. Breaking that urn charge, but not going to be any follow-up there too far at this point. And the heart is picked up now on the Cancer Lancer. So Loda continuing to farm, and now these illusions. Quite tanky. Hard to kill off, and he's going to be able to get in these split pushes in the tower. Not going to really be able to do anything about it. Just going to sit there and attack illusions and maybe kill one off. And there will still be seven. So no tighter, looking to be in a pretty good position just in terms of split pushing Aki. I'm going to throw a pause out here, and that's going to give me a chance to try and refresh my chat, since it wasn't working earlier. When I started casting, I was kind of in a hurry, since they moved the game forward an hour on me. Give me a chance to see what all of you lovely people are saying. Okay, so my chat is fixed now. I guess it just was having some trouble when I started. Note Aki ready to go. Gives me a second to bring up this item menu that kind of, I guess it doesn't take up as much space as it used to, but you can usually look on it a little bit longer. The relic is up on Illidan. It looks like he's still committing to going for this radiance. And gotta have it soon. Actually, right now, there it is. The courier was bringing, or he sent back attack. to base. He poured back to base, and the courier had it. So he's gonna have that radiance. It's not the biggest pickup when Dyer's you get it 35 minutes into the game, gone. but it's still pretty useful against all these fan lancer lutes who are gonna be taking that burn damage, as well as the supports on the no tire lineup who are very, very underfarmed. Definitely not having the best time of it in this particular game. Still not sure if it is the best pickup. I feel like if maybe you just grab something like a defusal, just having the haunt illusions able to hit Anaki as well as EGM might have been enough. We have ports coming in, it looks like they're gonna be a complete defense coming out from Burst Pro, everyone but the Spectre here at that point. Draw out some ports, so Admiral Bulldog immediately gonna port up to this top lane. Has that Necro Book 3 up now on his nature's profit. So it'll put quite a bit of Radiance pushing power out, tower. as well as these Necro attack. units being kind of a hassle for anyone who's trying to yank him like crazy on. The Nyx Assassin, his name finally updating to normal with that pause. I don't know if he just took a chance to do it. Not sure what Rubik lifted there, maybe an illusion. And Illidan hanging out here getting in a fight. With some Necro Book and minions. This one's gonna die to his radiance. Looks like no creep ends up killing it. Shackle not going to latch on the Spectre, and he's going to be able to just walk away fine. So no gig coming out there, and pretty hard to gank. It's, has a lot of HP, and then of course the 22% damage reflection. When you have a 16 HP, that's quite a bit. A little over 300. And it gets that damage reduced as well as reflected back, and heroes like Windrunner we not really super high in HP. If she can take some damage, might even go down from that sort of thing. Still Spectre, not as tanky as maybe I would have expected this late into the game. Just hasn't had the best time of farming, getting kind of outclassed by both the Nature's Prophet and the Phantom Lancer for the time being, and probably for the rest of the game unless Suddenly these heroes get ganked several times in a row. Yasha picked up on Phantom Lancer, so he will be going back for that Manta now. Just wanted the heart to make the illusions as big as possible. Here they come. Here comes a split push up the top lane once again. Recall coming out on Lodo, gonna bring him down towards the bottom lane. Looks like they might be going for a gank on Crazy. Such a we're gonna get dropped, maybe hoping he'll run into them. And... 
Looks like he's ready to do just that. Crazy and Loda gonna see each other. Spirit Lance flying through and there he goes. But there is the Night void Saints. from the Night Stalker and he is dead. Night Stalker getting that last hit. As far able to get in range in time was farming the creep wave. Notice, hey, that guy's porting. I have a, an ability that breaks that. And we're both going to be continuing to farm. Try to get all of the money up to 3200 gold. Let's see what he goes for next. Already kind of a way more supporty type of build than we normally see Emerald Bulldog going for. With the Necro Book as well as the Mechanism. But need to really just pick up that mech. There wasn't much chance of anyone else on this team getting it with kind of how these supports have been getting picked off constantly. There's a, just a lot of ganking potential coming out from this first pro lineup. Nothing really picked up on the line. He's got the drums, which give him some stats. Illuminate gonna channel through. Deal some damage to line as well as Darks here. Aegis gonna go the way of Spectre, snatching it. Big plays. Big plays. Loda getting burned down by this Reigns effect. Looks like he's gonna be able to get a kill. Try to run away. In some trouble, and he's going down. This time Night Stalker was able to chase down Lion. But losing their Fanlets are not what they want to be doing. Aki trying to get away, and, and no S4 getting picked off as well. Just gonna see if Aki was going for the recall. Looks like he's just gonna let Loda port to the top lane. They're gonna try and push up here. But that timing for Virtus Pro, basically perfect. The Titan are getting the last hit on Roshan, but the Aegis Snatch coming out of the Spectre, who uh, just came in off that haunt, and now has an Aegis to look at. Gonna be even harder to kill, has this radius or Radiance Burn. It's gonna continue those fights. We already saw what it did to the heroes in those higher lineup. The supports were low on HP from no one even really attacking them. Even Loda losing quite a bit of health once he was getting hit there. 2400 HP, not a ton Dyer's even with a heart. Is under attack. So split push gonna continue, however. Earth Spike not going to stop the illusions for long, but timing out well. Crazy heading up towards this top lane now. Going to spot out illusions. Of the fan lancer, just going to steal some of his farm with an impale. Yeah, top tier 2 continuing to take damage from the split push, but not as much as maybe it could. Spectre getting something, something away. Yasha! This looks to be going for a man's style of his own. We'll eventually have that up. Not as quickly as the Phantom Lancer should, who is only a couple hundred gold away at this point. Which gives him even more damage, even more pushing ability. He can just summon some more illusions at will. Send them into lanes. EGM picks up a Bracer, so still pretty much nothing. 1500 gold there. Not sure what he's uh, saving for. Maybe it's just going for Ghost Scepter to try and have that ability to not get destroyed by Spectre. Even just the illusions from Hot doing so much damage to these supports, especially if they get separated trying to position themselves well. Ghost Scepter is picked up on Keeper Light. Probably for much the same reason. Doesn't want to be dead just from the duration of Haunt. We saw as far with the BKB, his Vlad's picked up as well now. Which gives all these fan lancer illusions more damage and, t and uh, as well as the lifesteal. And Loto with that manta now. Let's see what he farms for next. Yeah, here he has this level 2 defusal, the manta of the heart. Maybe just go for butterfly, I think that's uh, kind of typical. Pushing up the top lane with the illusions once again, gonna spawn in the manta ones as well. Need to get all of them pushing. There they go. And Vers Pro on the opposite side of the map. See Emerald Bulldog does pick up that Scythe of Eyes now. Top tower Pretty a decent pickup. Some lockdown to get for a team Radiant's who's kind of lacking for it, all things considered. It looks like this is just going to be a tower trade. Fanlets are already getting the kill on the top one. And Nick Sesson able to finish Radiant's off the bottom, bottom Ghost Scepter up on the Rubik as well now. It's chaos I got. Chief's Guard, as well as Boots of Travel of his own. So v Vers Pro, trying to show that they're ready to Radiant's counter this split push. 
Illuminate's flying through trying to stall up this push from VP as long as possible. We already have the Boots of Travel coming back from KSI trying to stop this push. The illusions in there as well as those Necro units. I'm kind of surprised they don't stay. Maybe he just doesn't want to give him the farm involved with that. Just some time out over here. Vendetta getting used by Crazy. Hoping to find anyone out. Double getting damage. close to a scythe of his own. We'll have it in the near future. Still about 900 gold away. But a pretty big pick up for him as well. If you can get it on someone like S4. Kind of just blink out there. Blinks on top of the cliff and parts. <laughs> okay. So, felt like he got in over his head maybe a little bit there and just abandons any sort of plan he had for ganking friends four heroes from No Tide Hunter. Which is approximately three more than he would like. Load of farming up in this top lane with double damage rune up on his hero now. Double damage is one of those unfortunate things that kind of gives away which hero is real. Which makes him farming in lane feel a little bit riskier. You never know when that next assassin is going to be there. And having a bunch of illusions down at least makes it a little more difficult to target the real one. But when one's blue, glowing, glowing with like blue lightning, it's pretty easy to spot them out. Aki popping that recall, it looks like. It's all of our fault. Loda, gotta get out in time. No damage dealt to him to break the recall. And here comes the Spectre Illusion. Wants him. Pates out. Another Spectre Illusion. From the Mantis style this time, getting shackled up. So Nature's probably going to port to the timeline. Lion able to kill off Aki with that finger of death. EGM in some trouble as well, getting hit by the Embale. Silence as well as the Mischance coming on. Crazy going to keep EGM alive for the moment. And these illusions continue to chase. Going to time out before they get there. And Nature's Prophet putting some pressure the way of this top tier 3 once again. Trying to lay as much damage of, as, on it as possible. Doesn't care, his team's getting ganked, they're getting kills on the Keeper Light. We understand, Keeper Light, you like killing him, he's 1-6. Like, sure, you hate Aki. That's fine, guys. We'll let you keep, we'll trade him for, like, chip damage on this Tier 3 tower repeatedly. Until you lose that Tier 3 tower, and then you always have to be concerned that your barracks are just gonna go down. Nature's Prophet gonna port up there. Summon those Treants, summon that Necro Book. You're just gonna let him watch him and kill you. Oblivion Staff picked up on KSI. Kind of unimaginable that he'd be going for an Orchid this late into the game. So it might be a sign that he's going for a refresher over once that double wall. Meantime, Bulldog once again up to 3k gold. Not sure what he's going to want to pick up next. Probably going to have to sell his Midas. To buy it, since I'm assuming he kind of wants the Shadow Blade just for the invisibility still. It's certainly possible he could just go for something like a Desolator. Try and get as much damage as possible, that armor reduction. Super useful when he tries to backdoor towers. And uh, if he had it, honestly, might have led to the death of this tier 3 by now. If he got uh, just a couple attacks off on it. But on the other hand, might just want to grab, I don't know, something like a Manta style to provide an il some illusions to attack the tower. If he's feeling like he's in the position where he's not really going to be able to ever actually get that close to the tower safely, with all these boots of travel coming up on the enemy team, they are defending against the split push pretty well, and if he gets caught out, I'm probably not going to survive for long as a hood picked up on Rubik. Concerned about all that magic damage, man. Get that hood. Wants the pipe. Just got a lot of push. S4 getting side advised. Going to force staff away. He's still alive. Shackle shot going to land. On crazy, but not too much damage coming through. Emerald Bulldog getting in over his head. Looks like he's going to be the first death still alive for the moment. The vacuum not going to pull him, but the uh, mana burn does finish him off. She was guard getting popped as well, trying to keep him alive. Emerald Bulldog, very aggressive port into that fight, trying to be involved. It looks like he's going to have to port to the bottom lane. There he goes. No, oh, just fake porting. It's gonna force out a TP. Nonetheless, crazy seeing this creep wave here. Doesn't want to let any damage hit that tier three tower. He doesn't have to. This chip damage does build up, and it's not really feeling like VP are in a position where they're ever gonna really be super successful pushing into the base, as they have to worry about both a Phantom Lancer and 
a nature's prophet split pushing them and then even the keeper light with the recall ability enabling that split push even more Aki rocking a couple stacks in this jungle try to maximize the farm for his heroes we see family are up to the highest net worth now up to 5k gold once again maybe we'll just see him break down those tranquil boots next and uh, grab the boots of travel Saves him an item slot for these TP scrolls that he's been mostly carrying. As well as uh, upgrades those Tranquil Boots that are not super useful once you have heart. They cost you mana and heal much less than just your natural regen is going to do if you leave it alone. It's going to fight a double damage in the upper river. Looks like he's going to take it. There we go. Double damage! Moving around, trying to get work done on this Phantom Lancer. So he's just going to send some illusions around. Keep the pressure up. Keep Avertus Pro on their side of the map. And while this is going on, they're continuing to outfarm pretty heavily. Spectre, the highest on the dire side. And still about 4k in net worth behind the Phantom Lancer. Which is a rather large differential. Talisman of Evasion picked on Spectre, so go for that butterfly next. Pretty big item to have, and it looks like they want to go for Roshan. It looks like they're going to be contested this time as no TIE Hunter are here. They throw a power shot through. They spot it out. Here comes an illusion of Phantom Lancer and a couple more illusions even out as well now. This Rosh attempt, pretty damn risky, and it looks like they know it. They're going to back off. No Titer, I think, just tried to buy as much time as possible. They're going to force heroes out just by virtue of ha having Nature's Prophet hanging out in that top lane. Split pushing once again, approaching that tower. This time it's double catapult wave, and they have the Necro ranged archer. Just uh, throwing arrows at it as well. It's going to take quite a bit of damage just from the tower, uh, the creep wave. These catapults lane into it. No one's up here from Vernus Pro. Here comes Illidan, finally, to try and kill off these catapults, and they're going to lose their tier 3. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Smile, I think, was the one who poured up. It could have also been crazy on the Nyx Assassin. But you can't afford to not kill off double catapults just laying into your tier 3 tower when there's that big of a creep wave. The tower never going to get to those catapults, as it typically is just attacking the creeps over them. Wait, thanks. You know, loses its life, so now they have exposed Rax. Up on their top lane, we saw, of course, Nature's Prophet pick up the BKB as the last time. Did sell the Midas for that. So it's going to be even more resilient, and also probably not going to be super worried about split pushing. You can just head into the base with that. Try and do whatever damage to the, tier th to the uh, barracks in this top lane that he can. If he gets a set of Rax down... Well, it definitely means that we're not going to be seeing another Roche attempt coming out from Virtus Pro anytime soon, as Roche is regening, and they don't have really the damage to kill him off fast enough. The butterfly getting ever closer to finished by the Spectre. Not sure if Illidan will actually buy out for it. Of course, a risky move, especially without having that Aegis. Not the situation you want to be in where you buy out for a big item and the big team fight just takes place. But no tight hitter, of course, not looking like they really want to get in a big team fight. They're sitting eight kills behind, but we can look at experience of gold and see gold in their favor by 13, approaching 14k. Experience way the other way. Virtus Pro able to take it 7,500, and that's all those kills they are leading by. It's kind of an interesting game, but we're seeing the out farm on the side of No Tight Hunter just really starting to be a big deal. There's an entire butterfly picked up on Fan Lancer now, as well as 3k more gold. So now he could start getting those boots of travel as well if he wants. He can pour it in to this top lane, help Nature's Prophet push, throw a bulldog, getting ganked. Haste. Drops those Necro units, gonna get sheeped up. Needed to pop the BKB, it looks like, and he's gonna lose his life. Even while invisible, the gem oh the gem got given to crazy there. So Admiral Bulldog can let himself get picked off in the top lane. Doesn't have buyback after buying that KB really? No, he has buyback. Why is it telling me no? Like very clearly has buyback. Okay.
okay. Looks like we're all gonna bring Fan Lancer to the mid lane smile. Oh, Into so trouble getting four staff, keeping him alive for the moment, but it looks like he's gonna lose his life as S4 popping the BKB immediately. Doesn't wanna get stunned up. KSI trapped in some sprout after that buyback from Nature's Prophet. Loda laying into KSI with these illusions as well as the hero gonna pop the Manta. Summon some more Illidan now. Gonna be their target and gonna go down. Loses his life. Did he buy the butterfly? No, so he does have buyback. That's what I was trying to say, yo, you gotta be careful. When you have the money for a big expensive item, you want to get the luxury item, you think it's going to be important. But you never know when you're just going to lose a big fight on the back of it. And Butterfly might have helped a little bit with State of Life a little bit longer, but... When you're against all these Cancer Lancer illusions, just laying into you, it's not going to save you for too long. You see the Radiance Bird helping to bring down these illusions, but they already lost half the health on the Tier 3 tower. Shaco Shaco to fly through an Illidan doesn't latch to anything. But the illusion is going to get spawned once again. This tier 3 tower down below a quarter HP. They still have necro book units. They have illusions. Attacking it for as long as possible. The glyph going to be popped. Keeping it alive for now. Feedback going to hurt crazy a little bit there. And it looks like no time are just going to be happy to back off with that. End up getting two kills for nothing. Illusion. Yep. Force nut buybacks on Illidan, of course, always a big deal. He's still a little bit off of that b uh, butterfly once again now. And crazy, going for a gank on Admiral Bulldog. Has the gem. And Admiral Bulldog. Not using the BKB once again. He's already at half health. And Spectre is here. Gonna pop the BKB. He needs to have ported out already. There's a gem up on crazy and. He gone. Top barracks are under attack. So that BKB just able to port out in the meantime the top barracks. Taking some damage. Unfortunately, there is backdoor protection, it looks like. Based on them the barracks taking absolutely no damage. But you could you could right-click them on that barracks load, it's not doing anything. Server so Bulldog gonna survive. That was the 10 second BKB charge. No, it was the 9 second BKB charge. I didn't see him. Oh, he's probably using the mid fight and I just didn't know. Smile. Looks like he's gonna get picked off in the middle lane before the fight even starts. Crazy blinking and try to do whatever he can to EGM. And it's taken quite a bit of damage, however. He already steals an ability and it's gonna be Illuminate. But he'll lose his life for this. And the Illuminate. Gonna hit on three heroes pretty good, but NS going down as well. Or NS already went down. That uh, was two Phantom Lancer. Illuminate gonna fight to kill off these illusions from the Spectre. Sheep's Guard from KSI trying to keep the illusions Dyer's at bay. Well, that's tier 3. Down. The other two fallen. sets of exposed racks. EGM has a gem of his own picked up, Dyer's so gonna be able to spot out this rotation Dyer's from Crazy. He was trying to get in position to go for something. He's just gonna port back. Melee racks down the mid lane. KSI, there goes the refresher room. Gets the second wall off. But the wall just not doing anything, unfortunately. Loda, gonna try and get in a fight with whatever he can, it looks like. Spectre already killing off Nature's Prophet. No buyback from him this time. Should still be on cooldown. Yep, for another minute, 40. And Loda, looking like he's just gonna get forced back. There's that gem, however, up on Crazy, so probably not going to work out too well for him. Might just need to get in a fight. Trying to fight Crazy, not gonna work out too well. Fanlets are immediately buying back the tier 3 in the top lane already down to, or the Melee ranks in the top lane already done to about a quarter HP. And pretty successful fight, all things considered, coming out from no time out there. It will take one set of rags, weaken the melee ranks quite a bit, make it even easier for Bulldog to try and backdoor. Or just keep split pushing, keep that pressure up. VP have to be even more aware of it now with how quickly it'll go down. Can't really allow another catapult wave to just make its way here. And uh, speaking of catapult waves making their way there, here we go again. Pretty late creep wave, has double catapults. Should be able to make it there pretty much with the next creep cycle. And they're going for Roshan. It's done very quickly. Moderately fortunate. Uh, S4 gonna get body blocked, popping his BKB now. It looks like he's not teleporting yet, which is somewhat surprising since the BKB gonna wear off. That's gonna be the death of S4 in the Radiant Jungle. Gonna buy back immediately. Looks like a port coming up from him. In the meantime, NS gets picked off by Phantom Lancer. Taking too much damage, that mana leak really hurting KSI here. He wants to get out of a range, but not gonna work out particularly well. Loses almost all of his mana. Crazy goes down to Windrunner, buys back immediately. Just gonna allow him to be in this top lane. Fortunately, these catapults are going on the ranged rags.
stupid catapults, not knowing to go for the melee first. Just going for the one that was closer. Oh, ho, this one figured it out. Going for the melee. So these catapults laying in both racks, low on HP. In the meantime, Roshan going to go down the radiant Night Stalker, picking up the ages. A little bit more concerned about losing his life than the Fan Lancer, for the most part. Having the Night Stalker up twice in these fights pretty valuable. He has a heart of his own, of course. So super tanky. And now, respawns. Boots of Travel. Coming from Fan Lancer as well as a second Reaver. So it does look like we're going to see double hearts. There they are. Double heart Phantom Lancer. 4k HP. Two hearts. No big deal. No big deal. Sold his... What did he sell for that? Uh, oh, right. He bought the Boots of Travel, so he had an extra item slot from TP Scrolls. S4 going to get initiated now. Gets pulled into the wall. KSI throwing that Shiva's guard down as well. S4 already taking a lot of damage. Hasn't been able to accomplish anything yet. Illuminate going to fly through. Meantime, Illid in the back fight. Here comes the second wall from KSI, but he's going to get sided up before he can get anything done with it. The Earth Spike and Impale coming through. It looks like S4 going to lose that first life. Admiral Bulldog taking a lot of damage as well. Going to lose his life, but in the meantime, the bottom barracks go down. Nature's Prophet going to port to there. That fight is being won by Virtus Pro. S4 going to lose his life again post Aegis. And they're going to port all the way down bottom. Save their barracks from Admiral Bulldog. He's getting sided up. But they need to be careful about committing too much to this. There's still Phantom Lancer up in that top lane. Emerald Bulldog trying to survive as long as he can, but he's going to go down. In the meantime, they're going to initiate on Illidan. It looks like summoning the illusions. Here they go. Melee Rax taking damage. The Glyph coming out from the Virtus Pro lineup. Are no are going to be willing to sacrifice their lives for this? It's late in the game. And it looks like they're just going to run surprised. The illusions didn't go on it. Maybe the backdoor regen was up and this did it good. But the creep waves weren't in the base. But that's another set of exposed racks, and it looks like that melee racks will be going down here in the bottom lane. Catapults, too strong, too strong. Dyer's Bam, melee racks gone. Catapults doing bottom. work for no tide hunter this game. Taking a tier three tower as well as a set of melee racks now, and helping to keep Virtus Pro on the back foot. That's another. Melee racks that they have to be worried about. And the Dyer's top melee racks go down as well to the Phantom Lancer illusion. Feast. They have lost all their melee racks. And here comes more catapults. Wanting to do God's work. Not gonna be able to, however. Creep wave already killed off by KSI as well as crazy. And Virtus Pro gotta be feeling like they're on the back foot now. They have to make something happen here. All of their lanes are gonna be constantly just pushing. They only have two range racks left. They're trying to take this tier two, the last tier two up on the map. In the mid lane, Illidan gonna get shackled up. Doesn't look like anything really gonna come with that. Just trying to slow down the push. Radiant He's the one that does the most damage. These two supports. Not hitting particularly hard. Illidan gonna get hit by a spirit lance now. Telkinese is coming out from Loda. Or onto Loda, rather. Dyer's the ult from Spectre doing damage. Desolating the supports. Of no tight hunter lineup, the supports, or, or the illusions in the meantime from Fairlands Lancer, kill off the range racks. In the top lane, that's one left. And tier 4 is going to start taking some damage as well as buildings. All these buildings just hanging around. Looks like VP are just going to go for it. They have to force this fight. EGM going to get picked off to start. All these line stunts doing is whatever work they can. S4 tickets of damage hexed up for the moment. Loda trying to get in the fight. It's going to be the death of Crazy Windrunner getting that last hit. Loda trying to do as much as possible. The gem is on the ground. Probably needs to back off. And got to try and run away on his hero. Radiance Burn doing a lot of damage, but looks like he's going to be able to get away from him. KSI chasing. Wants to get that kill on Loda. Not going to be able to get in range. Loda looked like he was going to throw a dagger, but... Unfortunately, Loda is already healing up. Dyer's They've lost a hero for that. A little lag spike there. Radiance middle tower is under attack. So forced back. For the moment, it looks like they weren't able to take the tier three. Not even dealing more than two damage in the midst of that. And not the position you want to be in. Well, it looks Dyer's like Bulldog going to come in from behind, gets the backstab of KSI. Unfortunately, Scythe of Eyes and then Trance to help his team not be able to keep up. KSI. Gotta be thanking him. All this is going on. 
They're losing their base. The pressure from this creep wave, especially in the top lane where no one's really at. Too strong, Illidan gonna lose his life on the Spectre. Buys back immediately. Lion gonna go down again as well. Boots of Travel coming out. They're just gonna call it GG. Smile those. They're done. This push is coming. They only have one range rack, and they can't even defend it. They don't have the glyph. There's always a creep wave in from either the mid Dyer's or the top lane. The Rex will be down in a matter of seconds, and they do not have the lockdown to try and keep all Dyer's these heroes down. Mega creeps. Not a thing you want to run into. Not a fight you want to try and take. But that's going to be it for game one. Pretty long game, which is kind of what you expect to see. One team picks Spectre, and the other team picks Phantom Lancer. You thinking, man, I'm about to watch a pretty long game. 63 minutes, the final time. And that's going to do it for game one. Once again, my name is Knaz. I'm covering this match in the Losers Bracket Finals. For the Russian Dota 2 League, we'll be back momentarily as we get ready for that game too. See if Virtus Pro can take a game back the w from No Time Hunter, or if No Time is going to take that clean two.